المصطفى خصوصا على سيد الأنبياء محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الغلي الميامين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين وقال تعالى وقالوا يا ويلنا هذا يوم الدين هذا يوم الفصل الذي كنتم به تكذبون وقال تعالى لا أقسم بيوم القيامة وقال تعالى الله لا إله إلا هو لا يجمعنكم إلى يوم القيامة لا ريب فيه ومن أصدق من الله حديثا وقال تعالى يوم يجمعكم ليوم الجمع ذلك يوم التغاب وقال تعالى وأنذرهم يوم الحسرة إذ قضي الأمر وهم في غفلة وهم لا يؤمنون وقال تعالى يلقي الروح من أمنه على من يشاء من عباده لينذر يوم التلاق وقال تعالى ويا قوم إني أخاف عليكم يوم التناد صدق الله قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا سيد ولد آدم ولا فخر وأنا أول من تنشق عنه العرض يوم القيامة ولا فخر وأنا أول شافع وأول مشفع وبيدي لواء الحمد يوم القيامة ولا فخر أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمني وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي جزى الله عنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم ما هو أهله in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala mentions that He has favored the Prophet والسلام, the chosen servants of His with an exclusive and distinctive feature, quality and trait and that is their constant remembrance of the Akhirah إِنَّا أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ بِخَالِصَةٍ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ أي إِنَّا أَخْلَصْنَاهُمْ بِخَصْلَةٍ خَالِصَةٍ وَهِيَ ذِكْرَ الدَّارِ We have favored them with an exclusive and distinct, distinct quality and feature and trait and that is they are constantly remembering their hereafter. The Prophet ﷺ main concern was how they can gain success and salvation in the Akhirah. This is the reason why we find in the story of Yaqub and Yusuf ﷺ, we know that when Yusuf ﷺ went missing and Ya'qub islam he shed tears to such an extent that he became blind we automatically assume that he was crying because he was missing his son but this is not the case وَقَالَ يَا أَسَفَا عَلَىٰ يُوسُفَ وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ The Mufassirin say the reason why Yusuf salam wept himself into blindness is because he thought to himself what is the condition of the iman and deen of my child is he still upon the deen? Does he still have deen or not? This is the reason why we find in Surah Baqarah when Allah Ta'ala speaks about what advice and wasiyah Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ya'qub alayhi salam gave to their children. They only gave one advice. وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبِ يَا بَنِيَّ إِنَّ اللَّهُ اصْطَفَى لَكُمُ الدِّينَ فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Ibrahim alayhi salam as well as Yaqub alayhi salam emphatically imparted to all their children before death only one advice and that was O oh my beloved children inna Allah astafa lakum ad-deen indeed Allah ta'ala has chosen the deen of Islam for you fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun be sure you never die but upon Islam inna ad-deen inda Allah al-Islam Allah ta'ala says the only deen that is accepted in the sight of Allah is Islam. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ Anyone who chooses a religion other than the religion of Islam, it will never be accepted from him. So this is the quality of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Likewise, we find in the Qur'an that when Allah Ta'ala speaks about the muttaqun, He specifically mentions that they have a distinctive quality which is وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ يُقِنُونَ They firmly believe in their hereafter. And those of us who study صَرْفَ and نَحْوَ and بَلَاغَ we know that if Allah Ta'ala wanted, He could have said وَيُقِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ But Allah Ta'ala with emphasis, He first brings the ضَمِير munfasil the detached pronoun. And then on top of that, He brings the ضَمِير fasl And then on top of that, He does taqdeem of the جَارَ and majrur. تَقْدِيمُ مَا حَقُّهُ التَّأْخِيرِ يُجِبُ الْحَصْرَ وَالتَّأْكِيدِ To emphasize this matter, that it is this quality of their firm belief in the Akhirah that they have taqwa and they are able to 
obey Allah Ta'ala and stay away from his disobedience. Because when a person has the firm belief that one day I will die and I will have to give account for every utterance that came out of my mouth and for every action that I did in this life, it is impossible that he lives a life of disobedience and he lives a life like how the disbelievers live. This is the reason why Allah Ta'ala says, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يَسْتَوُونَ A believer and a disbeliever cannot be the same. A mu'min and a kafir cannot be the same. Because a believer, he believes that he will die one day and he will stand before Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. That is why Allah Ta'ala said, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَلَالْمُسِيءِ قَلِيلًا مَا تَتَذَكَّرُونَ the blind and the person who can see the spiritually alive and the spiritually dead, the person who has iman and does good deeds, and the person who does not have iman and who does not do good deeds, they will never be equal. Do those who do not believe and they live the entire lives committing sins, do they think that we will treat them equally on the Day of Judgment like those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do righteous deeds and they live a life of obedience سَوَاءً مَحْيَاهُمْ مَمَمَاتُهُمْ that their life and their death will be equal in the sight of Allah? This is never possible. سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ How terrible is the judgment that they make. They actually believe that they can live their life in disobedience and yet Allah Ta'ala will treat them like his, like his obedient servants. So from this we learn the importance of belief in the Akhirah. This is the reason why belief in the Akhirah is one of the main three central themes of the Qur'an. There, there are three main central themes of the Qur'an Every single ayah of the Qur'an rotates and revolves around any one of these three themes. The first theme is Ithbatu Tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second theme is Ithbatu Risala, establishing the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third theme is Ithbatu Akhirah, establishing that there is life after death. This is the reason why in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has enumerated many names for this day. If Allah ta'ala wanted, He could have just mentioned one name for the Day of Judgment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many names of this day so that we may instill in our hearts the firm belief that this day is the ultimate truth. This day will occur. إِنَّ السَّاعَةَ لَآتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ So one of the most famous names of this day that we use is يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ and, and this word comes approximately 70 times in the Qur'an. There are three reasons why this day is called يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Number one, it is the day when we will stand before our Lord and we will have to give account for every action that we did. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ This is the day when all humankind will stand before the Lord of all of the universes. The second reason why يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ is called يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ is because this is the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell the Anbiya and the Ummah Muhammadiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to rise up and give testimony in favor of all of the prophets that they conveyed the message of Allah and to give testimony in favor of the believers of every nation. <laughs> Indeed, we will assist our prophets and the believing people in this dunya and on the day when the witnesses will be will rise and they will give testimony in favor of the Anbiya and the believers. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam requested Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu an, iqra'a alayya, O Abdullah bin Mas'ud, recite some Qur'an to me. He said, a'aqra'u alayka ya Rasulullah wa alayka unzil. How can I recite to you, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it is you upon who the divine revelation is being revealed? If anything, 
I should be listening to your recitation. In answer, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Uhibu an asma'ahu min ghairi." I like to hear the Quran being recited from someone else. He then went on to recite Surah An-Nisa, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an, regarding whose recitation Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Man ahabba an yaqra' al-Quran ghaddan kama unzil, fal yaqra' bi qira'at ibn Ummi Abdin." Whosoever wishes to recite the Quran in a manner that when he is reciting the Quran, it feels as if the Quran is being revealed at the very moment, then he should recite Quran like Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu an. He started reciting Surah An-Nisa, and then when he reached the verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا He looked at the blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَإِذَا عَيْنَاهُ تَذْرِفَانِ The blessed eyes of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were flowing with tears. Now we have to ask ourselves, what is in this ayah? What is in this ayah that made Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cry so profusely? It is because in this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, what will be the condition of the people when we bring forth a witness from every ummah referring to the prophet of that respective nation who will give testimony that I conveyed the deen of Allah to these people. And these are the people that accepted and these are the people who did not accept. وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَاُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا And what will be the condition of your ummah, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we bring you forth to give testimony against your own ummah? So when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam realized that on the day of judgment he will have to give testimony against those individuals of his ummah who did not believe in his message, he started to weep because this is how much love and compassion Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had for his ummah. We know that on the day of judgment, one of the names of this day is Yawmul Firar. Because on this day, everyone will run away from each other. But this is the day when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will say, Ummati, Ummati. Everyone else will be, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ this is the day when a man will run away from his own brother. He will run away from his own children. He will run away from his own wife and spouse. He will run away from his own family. Because every person will be preoccupied with his own self. What will happen to me? What will happen to me? What will happen to me? This is the day regarding which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ وَتَضَعُ كُلُّ ذَاتِ حَمْلٍ حَمْلَهَا وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارًا وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارًا وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٍ That this day will be so intense that you will see every suckling mother will neglect and forget her suckling infant. And every pregnant woman will abort her unborn child. And you will see and you will think that every person is drunk when in reality they are not drunk. But it is the realization that the punishment of Allah Ta'ala is so severe that it will seem as if all of them are drunk. They are not drunk with alcohol and they are not intoxicated with drugs. This is the intoxication of intense fear from the punishment of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Another name that is given to this day is Yawmuddin. I read in the beginning of the khutbah, Maliki Yawmuddin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the owner and He is the master of the day of recompense. In, in Arabic, there's a saying, Kama tadinu tudan. How you treat others is how you will be treated. Similarly, on this day, how we acted in this dunya, we will see the recompense of it on this day, on the day of judgment. If we did good, we will see the reward of it. If we did evil, then we will see the punishment of it. One question might arise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things in the dunya. But why is it that exclusively he mentions that he is the owner of the day of recompense? So the Mufassirin mentioned the reason for this is on the, in the dunya, we have apparent ownership over things. We say that this is my car, this is my house, this is my clothes. We have a person as a president of a country, a prime minister, a king. We have mayors and governors. We have people who are owners of big, big companies. But on this day, all of these titles will, will finish. 
there will be no teacher student there will be no parent child there will be no leader and follower there will be no president and citizen there will be no employer and employee there will be no president and follower rather on this day everyone will come as a slave unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everyone will come alone and they will have to give account for all of the action that they did alone laysa baynahu wa bayna Allah tarjuman between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there will be no translator and there will be no interpreter wa kulluhum atihi yawm alqiyamati farda and in kullun illa ati arrahmani abda Every single person will come on to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his slave and every person will come alone. And it is on this day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take the entire humanity into account. هَذَا مَا تُوَعَدُونَ لِيَوْمِ الْحِسَابِ On this day when the final judgment is passed that the people of Jannah will go to Jannah and the people of Jahannam will go to Jahannam Allah Ta'ala will say this is exactly what has been promised to you for the day of accountability you were told beforehand that you will die and you will have to give account for all of the actions that you did and today you are seeing with your own eyes that what after this life when they will be resurrected from their graves and they will be assembled in the plane of resurrection they will say qalu ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina hadha ma wa'ada ar-rahman wa sadaqa al-mursalun what has happened to us who is the per- who is that being who has awakened us from our place of sleep and then an announcer will announce hadha ma wa'ada ar-rahman wa sadaqa al-mursalun this is exactly the day that all of the prophets came and spoke about and this is exactly the day that your God and your Lord and your Allah promised you but you chose not to believe it. وَقَالُوا يَا وَيْلَنَا هَذَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ هَذَا يَوْمُ الْفَصْلِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ بِهِ تُكَذِّبُونَ They will say this is the day of judgment that you chose to disbelieve in. You chose to deny. Now you are seeing with your eyes what the true reality is because the veils that were on your eyes in the day of judgment have been unveiled on the day of judgment laqad kunta fi ghaflatin min hadha fakashafna anka ghita'aka fa basaruka al-yawm hadid when you were in this world you were negligent and oblivious of this day but today with your own eyes you are seeing that this is a reality so after we have established that this day is a reality and all of us have to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this day would it not be foolish for us not to make any preparation for this day that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the true wise and intelligent person is that person who prepares for death al-kayyisu man da'ana nafsahu wa amina lima ba'da al-mawt وَالْعَاجِزُ مَنْ أَتْبَعَ نَفْسَهُ هَوَاهَا وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْأَمَانِ And the incapable, unintelligent person is he who follows his base desires, but yes, yet he has false hope in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whereas he is doing actions opposite of what attracts the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I will inshallah end with a story inshallah. And inshallah, this story can serve as a lesson for myself first and for all of us. So there was a man by the name of Bahlul. And he lived during the life of Harun al-Rashid. During the Khilafah of Harun al-Rashid, the famous Abbasi Khalifa. And this person, he used to roam the streets like a crazy person. So people used to think he was crazy. But in reality, he was not crazy. He was someone who was madly in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was majzub. Like we know, one of the khulafa of Mawlana Shawlitani rahmatullah alayhi was Professor Khaja Azizul Hassan rahimahullah. He was a very intelligent person, a very wise person. He was a, prof- a, a, a professor. But people used to call him majzub. What is the reason for this? Because he was so mad in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whether standing or sitting, at all times he would say poetry in Urdu and in Farsi in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
most of his poetry in Urdu and Farsi, he would say while sitting and standing impromptu in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of these poetry has been compiled in a book called Kashkula Majzub. So that's why the people used to call him Majzub. This is a madman, a crazy man. So anyone who would see him from afar, they would think this person is crazy. So Bahlul was like this. He used to roam the streets of Baghdad and people used to think he was crazy. So Harun al-Rashid, he used to also think that this is a crazy man and sometimes he would call him to his palace, he would joke with him and everything. So one day he called Bahlul to his palace and he said, I have a knife and I give you this knife as amana and find someone who is more foolish, who is more ahmaq than you and give this knife as a hadiyah to him on my behalf. If you can find someone who is more foolish and more ahmaq than you, then give this knife to him. So many months passed, many years passed, Bahlul never came to Harun Rashid. Until after many years, Harun Rashid became extremely sick and he was bedridden and this was his maradul maut. This is the death uh, this is the sickness that caused his death. So then when Bahlul heard of this, he came and did his iyada, he came to visit him. So he said, Oh Amirul Mu'mineen, what is your condition? So he said, Oh Bahlul, do not ask of my condition. I am on my journey to Akhirah. I'm, I'm, uh, I have a long journey to take. So then he said, What journey is this? Where are you going? He said, I'm going to Akhirah. I'm on my journey to Akhirah to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Bahlul said, uh, will your bodyguards go with you? Did you send any army beforehand? Did you send any soldiers? Did you send any servants? Did you make any preparation? So then Harun Rashid said, Bahlul, this is the reason why I said you are Ahmaq. Because you ask weird and ajib questions like this. Obviously, when we go on our journey for the Akhirah, we cannot take any of these things with us. So then he said, Oh Amirul Mu'mineen, when will you come back? Or will you, when will you come back? He said, Oh Bahlul, again you're asking another weird question. This is such a journey from which I will never come back. So then he said, what kind of safar and what kind of journey is this that you will go and you will never come back? He said, this is the condition of the Akhirah. Anyone who dies in this world, they don't get a second chance. They go to the Akhirah and they never come back. So then Bahlul said, you're going for such a long journey and you have made no preparations. I have seen you that you used to go on short journeys and come back immediately. But for these short journeys, you used to make so much preparations. You used to take so many bodyguards with you. You used, to, you used to send armies and soldiers. But for this long journey that you are talking about, you have made no preparations. Like the poet says, Safari ba'idun wa zadi layuballighani wa heelati yadu'afat wal mawtu yatlubuni. He says that my journey towards the akhirah is a very long, difficult journey. And the provision that I have for this journey is not sufficient to reach my destination. I don't have enough food. Meaning I have not done enough good deeds for me to save myself on this very fearful day. And my strategy to save myself and reach my destination is very weak. I have not done any good deeds. I am full of sin. This is the reason why one of the beautiful du'as that Rasulullah ﷺ taught us was Allahumma rahmatuka awsa'u min dhunubi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali O oh Allah, your rahma is more vast than my sins. Yes, I am a great sinner, but O oh Allah, your mercy is much greater than all of the sins I have committed. Wa maghfiratuka arja indi min amali And I have more hope in your forgiveness than I have in my good deeds. Marana Abdahi Laknawi Rahimahullah, he writes in a book, Ghibat Kiyahe. This is one of the best books written on the topic. He mentions the story of Hajjaj bin Yusuf. Who is Hajjaj bin Yusuf? 
He is a very polarized figure in Islamic history. When we hear of Hajjad bin Yusuf, we think of a tyrannical ruler, oppressor. And, and rightfully so. He, he was re responsible for the assassination of so many great people. When he passed away, someone saw him in a dream. And they said, oh, they said, oh Hajjad, what has happened to you? What did Hajjad bin Yusuf say? He said, I told Allah Ta'ala that when I was in this dunya, the whole world condemned me to the hellfire. The people said, Hajjad bin Yusuf, there is no abode except for Jahannam for him because he was such a tyrannical ruler, assassinator of so many great people. He has to go to Jahannam. So then he said, I said to Allah Ta'ala, the entire creation, all of the humankind, they condemned me to the hellfire. But I always had more hope in your mercy than fear for my sins. Because I know, oh Allah, you are ar rahman ar rahim and your mercy is greater than all of the sins and all of the oppression that I have done. When he said this to Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala said to him, O oh Hajjaj, because you have such husnul dhan regarding me, today I will make your husnul dhan regarding me come true. And he forgave Hajjaj bin Yusuf. So this is how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So Bahlul told Harun al-Rashid that you are going for such a long journey and you will never come back and you have made no preparations for it. I do not find anyone more deserving of giving this knife but to give it back to you. Because I have not found anyone more foolish than you. Because you know that you, will, you are going on such a long journey, but you have made no preparations for it. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives us the ability to realize that this day is a real day. And this is a day that we have to prepare for. And success in the akhirah is the real success. Salvation in the akhirah is the real salvation. Like how Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازِ What is the definition of true success? Anyone who has been saved from the hellfire and he has been admitted into the paradise. And what is the formula for us to attain this success? Very easy. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he will obtain this ultimate success. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala that He keeps us alive with iman. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala that He takes us away from this life with iman, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala resurrect us on the day of judgment with iman. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.